What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome to something completely different. I know, I know, it's not a Let's Play, but bear with me. This is that thrifting series that I said I would do that one time. Or let's just call it that thrifting series for the time being. Now, I have been wanting to do this for a long time. And honestly, I want to thank Lazy Game Reviews for showing me that there is actually interest in thrifting videos from gaming channels. Though I really do think it helps when the items thrifted are of a nerdy nature. Now, if you like this video and you've never been to Lazy Game Reviews channel, I'm going to go ahead and link it down below. There's a ton of great content, and it, LGR Thrifts is a really, really cool series. It's done completely differently from this one. I'm going to be doing this more in a subscription box style unboxing kind of video, for lack of a better genre. And I want to go ahead and point out that I'm doing a little experiment with the wide-angle lens. So if you see a little edge warping or blurring. That just means that didn't quite do a good job evening things out. Oh, and it wouldn't be a video on my channel if there wasn't cat interruptions every now and then because I tried closing the door, but she wouldn't let me. She's playing with it right now, and it's just better to have her walking in and out of frame than it is to, well, have her pawing at the door all the time. Now, just a little bit of background. My girlfriend and I thrift regularly, and we hit, mm, I want to say, just south of 30 unique thrift stores a week. Don't think we're crawling all over the place, though. We actually have, well, that many in our area. The furthest one out being about 30 minutes, and we hit... A good half dozen or so on the way back just from that one. And if we're doing certain things throughout the weekend, well, like visiting her parents, we can hit another half dozen more or more if we're feeling silly and want to go a little bit out of our way. Oh, there's the kitty. Hi, kitty. Now, that being said, we're in a little bit of a thrifting lull for some strange reason because... Well, I honestly don't know. Last year around this time, we were bringing home 10 or so board games a week. Well, actually, no, not a week, a trip. We do about three trips a week, three different routes. Split it up so we don't go insane. Er. Ooh, a car. Hopefully this mic won't pick it up. It's my first time trying out this new mic. The first mic that I've liked in this room. That's another reason why it's taken so long to do this series. It's also late at night, so that's why I'm kind of rambly. Anyway, on to the topic at hand. Because we are in a thrifting lull, I'm doing a little bit of a best of video. With today's topic being role-playing games, because it's a major hobby of mine. And I'll admit, the topic is slightly inspired by D&D Simber from Pro Jared. I really need a wraparound cam so you can see my face, because I just did a thumbs up with that one. Now... I've got a nice selection from things I've thrifted that I really, really, really want to show off. And at the same time, because this is my pilot episode, I'm actually going to do a twofer. You're going to get to see some of my favorite RPG items. And at the end, I'm going to show you an RPG haul. Because as I was getting everything ready to film this episode... I just so happened to have one night where the only things I found were role-playing game related. So, that's going to be interesting. Stick around to the end to see that and my most valuable RPG item ever. Well, thrifted. Nope. Nope, it is the most valuable item in my collection. So stick around to the end for that, or warp, I know you want to. Without further ado, let's kick this party off. First up... Dice. I paid a dollar for this box of dice. Oops. 
Bang the table. That's probably going to happen several times in this video. Yeah, I don't know how to fix that yet. I haven't tried the Steadicam. This is a sampler pack from Coplo or Copla or Kapla. I tried to find a pronunciation of this online and couldn't get it straight. So if you know it, let me know down in the comments. But I paid one buck. And here's the best part. It is quite full. Any of you out there watching this video who play RPGs know that most game stores will charge you between 50 cents to a dollar per die if you're buying them loose. With dice sets of seven going much higher depending on how decorative you're going. And I've seen kitty scratching in the background. I don't know if this mic will pick it up, sorry. I've seen um, stores on the extremes go for 25 cents and some of them a buck 50. So I've got pretty much everything you need to uh, stock a party of adventurers with two exceptions. I'm missing d12s and percentile dice. d12s or 10-sided dice look a little bit like this and percentile dice are d10s that look like this. They are marked with tens instead of single digits and when rolled in conjunction with one of your d10s you can make numbers from anywhere between oh let's see oh I can't find it there, there it is one and 100 and I know triple zero is 100 don't ask me why just trust me now my favorite thing about this set actually trying to do this through the viewfinder are these nice little yellow and blacks I don't know why but they really look good to me and I kind of want to take some of these uh, d20s and wrap them in chain mail because it's kind of my thing let's just there, there. yeah there we go yeah it's it's kind of my thing I enjoy it now on the topic of dice let's just get this out of the way oh that wasn't actually in frame oh well something a little bit different I know I know I said RPGs to start but how about a board game okay so it's actually Pirates of the Caribbean Pirates Dice I paid two bucks for this yeah, there it is right there and you know it's a take on Liar's Dice which is in itself a good game but I didn't care I don't care for the well okay I do enjoy Liar's Dice but I don't care for it in this presentation however let's just go ahead and before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and say that Pirate's Dice has one big flaw. When you open it up, it is going to smell like somebody did a road trip on a Harley in rubber pants. So if you're going to buy this for the same reason I did, buy a respirator, because it's, it's kind of rank, and to be honest, this has been sitting in my spare game closet, which as you can tell by the shelves is probably very full and it is and oh it's it's had time to fester oh I'm gonna just oh this is gonna be fun get up there we go shaky cam time oh yeah rules these are the culprits, these are what smell, but ultimately, they're not bad little dice cups. They're uh, kind of a molded rubber material. I don't hate them, but I hate smelling them. What I bought this for were actually these. I really, really like these dice. They're a faux slate finish with little skull and crossbones on the one. Now, in the game rules, that means it's a wild. But I play a lot of Shadowrun, which is why I need a lot of D6. This comes with 20. Though for some of the characters I run, that's still not enough. Uh, with Shadowrun, you basically roll pools of dice instead of individual dice for most of your things. So if you've got a rating of 3, 
Well, you roll 3d6. Some of my characters have a rating of 30. There's not enough dice in this box for that. And the most important part is the numbers of five, uh, 6 and 5 that you roll. Those are successes. Ones are very, very bad, hence why I really like the skull and crossbones. But let's see if I can get the autofocus to play nice. Eh? Maybe the fisheye lens is messing with the autofocus. No. Tap it. Aha. Autofocus, yes. Tap to focus. I like it. I like it a lot. But we got a lot of faux slate and damage. And each die is actually molded like this. So let's just bring up another two. It's the little details that I love so much. All right. Now, autofocus. Let's just un... There we go. Learning this as I go. This is my first time playing with a camera that's not a tuber. And no, I did not mispronunciate. Yeah. I did not mispronounce tuba. I mean tuber, as in a potato. There we go. Now, I've done all this harping on about dice. And what's funny is uh, the next thing I'm going to show you actually requires no dice at all. Terror 13, a horror RPG, which is actually a diceless system. Now I know why did I include this when I'm including my favorites. Well, A, the story behind how I found this, and B, something I'm going to link to down below. Now I found this book when I was going, oh, maybe a month into one of what has become my one of my favorite thrift stores. It had only been open for about a month, and by that time my girlfriend and I had already found a ton of D&D stuff some of which you'll be seeing later in this video, and I just saw the spine. Like, ooh, Terror 13, there is nothing here telling me that it is an RPG book, so I'm thinking, oh, independent press graphic novel, pick it up, and without even looking down, I start lamenting to my girlfriend, why? Why can we not find any independently published obscure RPGs? Because I'm a snob that way. Flip it over. Terror 13, horror RPG. And I laughed. I laughed so hard. I actually think I scared a couple people in aisle over. But anyway, this is a nifty little diceless RPG that I will admit takes itself way too seriously. It talks all about gothic horror and gothic romance, which I have nothing against those. But for me, I want to try repurposing it as a horror comedy or a B-movie schlock fest. I think it'll work great for that. Now, the thing I'm going to link to down below, the rules are actually available free of charge online, 100% legal, on drivethroughrpg.com. You can actually download this book, the quick start guide, and a supplement. So I'm going to link to all of that down below, and who knows, maybe some of you who have never played RPGs due to the cost of dice or, because like I said before, they're not the cheapest thing in the world if you're doing something with the classy or unique polyhedrals especially the d5s those things are obnoxiously expensive but if you've always wanted to try out an rpg and want to just go free here's one and feel free to dig through drive through rpg to actually check out their other stuff because there's a lot of free rpgs there i actually kind of have a lot of free games stored on a hard drive somewhere we need to go through those and see which ones are worth playing. That actually gave me a good segue to this next part. For the starters, I have box sets. I actually am only going to show you three box sets tonight. I could do an entire video on those, to be honest. So first up, Gamma World. This is an early edition, 1981. Sadly, it is a third printing, not a first. But not only is the book here, but I've got supplements. Oh, official stuff. Aha, map. I have official things. I have stuff from the previous owner. And I think I've got a few things that I've taken out of the box since I acquired this. I'm actually pleased. I've been really interested in this system since I found out about it. And you know what? I've got some of the early stuff published by TSR. So let's just go ahead and open it. Like I said, 
third printing, not as valuable. I've seen the first printing of this edition going online for over $100. One site was trying to get about $140. I don't think they're going to get that. I could be wrong. But that was first printing. This is third. We get a little bottom box condition. But we can guarantee it's worth several dozen times the $2 I paid for it. The next one I actually paid a little bit more for. I paid $3 for Star Frontier. This is a later version of Star Frontier. It's not the first, sadly. And here's the best part. Oh, we got the dice in there. That's from the previous owner. Maps are still in great shape. Oh, I forgot I had the, uh, the original RPGA membership sheet you got the little books and <laughs> yes it is unpunched everything is included I think a couple of no no I could be wrong unless there's a second sheet in here oh oh no don't punch yourself that never happened this is between me you and however other many people have viewed this video yeah, a couple of these chits actually did fall out due to age, but that's to be expected. Other than that, this thing's in amazing condition. I paid $3, well worth every penny. Get back in, there we go. And close. Oh, cannot forget the dice. Now, this next game has been on my to find list for the longest time and I found it at one of what I consider the least likely stores because it had just opened up it didn't really have a big gamer population in that area but it surprised the crap out of me my girlfriend actually found it and almost did a nosedive trying to grab it for before another guy did no wait that other guy was actually looking at a different shelf and she went at it before he could find it because he was grabbing anything not nailed down which is funny because he walked out of there with like a really large stack of really crap board games, but Nuke, the little, no, not Nuke, maybe you can't see it. There's a game on one of these shelves that's a really good old Steve Jackson game that he missed. Is it? Ah, there it is, actually. Ogre. He missed Ogre, and that copy of Ogre actually came with some expansions. I'm getting distracted. What I did find, or she found, I should say. That's right, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters International, the one of the later editions because, you know, Ghostbusters 2. Not only does it have everything, but it has one of the posters from the comic book. There we go, which the comic book is great if you've got that nostalgia going on. All the official sheets. Oh, actually, quite a lot of copies from the previous owner. None of them are filled out, though. We've got the original book. Haha, -ha, we've actually got supplements. We've got, let's see, Lurid Tales of Doom. Oh, wait, the original. Okay, I think it's just got the Lurid Tales of Doom, a few extra bits, and the poster. Sadly, it's missing the original ghost die. That's a very valuable. That die by itself fetches a sum, which is why I'm going to be making my own, not to sell, but to use, because I really want to break this game out at some point. Be a good first delve, because honestly, I've never GM'd before. I've only played. It's a nifty little system, especially for some starters. And because I don't have any videos planned to show this next item off, I'm going to show you something completely and utterly unrelated to role-playing games. But it's related to the last item I just showed you. I have here a shoe polisher. Yes, a shoe polisher. The Iona, let's see, oh, I can't remember the exact number, number, SP1 shoe polisher. Why am I showing you this, you might ask? Does the shape look a little bit familiar? 
Paint it black, put a little bit of, or a couple of LED covered wands here, and you've got yourself a PKE meter. This is the same model used to make the original PKE meter prop. Of course, the one that was used for that was green. I've got the red. But I found this sitting in the display case at a local Goodwill for five bucks. They were actually originally trying to get 12 or so for it, and then nobody wanted it. So they marked it down because it was in an area that was not exactly the most movie buff filled, especially Ghostbusters. No, I take that back. They would price anything marked Ghostbusters out the wazoo. But they missed this little slice of history. One day I will make some molds out of it and make my own prop. Until that day, it will sit in its nice original case. One of my favorite finds, hands down, to be honest. But that's because I'm a huge Ghostbusters nerd. I'm not even going to get into the sequel or the other sequel reboot thing going on. Awkward silence over, and let's get on to the next thing. Now we're finally getting into D&D. &D. And this, to be honest, is probably the most popular item I've found. And by that I mean every time I post it online, somebody tries to buy it off me. Which is kind of funny because they don't really go for that much, but it is a very popular addition. Of course, the D&D buffs out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Dungeons & Dragons 3.5. I've got the Dungeon Master's Guide, I've got the Player's Handbook, and I even have the Monster Manual. I paid two bucks each. This was not a bad night, to say the least. And like I said, every time I post this online, somebody tries to buy these off of me. I'm going to wait until I have a spare. I actually do have a, an additional player's handbook, but it's got some water damage, so I'm not going to be parting with that. For full price, anyway. Somebody may or may not convince me to sell it. But for the time being, it's going to stay on the shelf of shame due to the damage. But in a high place on the shelf of shame due to what it is. So there we are. Let's just get these lovelies out of the way. Oh, my little catching chair is starting to fill up. But I'm just about done. Don't worry. This has dragged on a lot longer than I would have liked, but I don't know. I'm enjoying how this is turning out. Now, while those are the most popular D&D &D items I have, I do have another very popular RPG I found. Pathfinder, aka D&D 3.5, made with the Open Gaming License or whatever it was called at the time. This game is freaking everywhere. And, you know, I'm not complaining. It's got a little bit of spine damage, unfortunately. But when you're paying $2, yeah, I'm not going to complain best part is, I found this at a store that hadn't paid out, well, if you don't count crappy card games, well, it never paid out, up until that day. And boy, did it. Book is in great condition inside. It's just got that little bit of spine damage. But I'm not complaining. Not at all. One of these days... I've got to break out each and every one of these systems that I have, and I'm not even showing you half of the ones I have, just because this video is going a wee bit longer than I wanted, and I don't want to bore you. Oh, and of course, this is not going to be the last RPG best of I'm doing. This is just me breaking out my favorites to get the topic started. After that, I am going to go into a few because you know I'm going to have a slow week thrifting. Now, next up, is probably my most valuable game per dollar paid. Vampire the Masquerade. I believe this is a first edition. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked in it. That's 1991 edition. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's not saying anything about subsequent printings. So yes. I'm just going to cop out and say it's an early edition Vampire the Masquerade core book. Now why do I say this is the most value per dollar paid? Well, it's because I found this 
on a night of dumpster diving, actually. I was just rummaging around behind a local store that throws out some pretty good stuff that I'll show you in future videos. And this just happened to be in one of their dumpsters. Go figure. The things people throw out, I swear. Once again, need to break it out. I have a, lot of, a few friends from college who really enjoyed this game, so I want to see what all the hype's about. And now, the moment a lot of you have been waiting for. My most valuable RPG item that I have found thus far. Hopefully I'll surpass it, but I wouldn't be upset if I didn't. The Dungeons and Dragons Deities and Demigods Cyclopedia. From Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, of course. Now, it's in amazing condition. Very little shelfware here. A little bit on the back. Something got dinged in. But outside of that... Oh, and that can come off. I just haven't done it because I'm not really good at restoring books. And I don't want to damage... Nope. No damage, no damage. I don't want to damage this book. And, of course, I've got a little bit of issue here with the previous owner putting their stickers inside. But, to be honest, they've actually written their name inside all of the other books that I got from this haul. So, not going to complain too hard. I'm not a big complainer. Now, this book, it's not the most valuable book outside of this edition. I think it's sub 50 bucks for a standard printing of deities and demigods. I could be wrong. Double check eBay. Just go for sold listings. Don't go for what people are asking for. I don't like listing what people are asking for. Of course, I don't usually resell my stuff anyway. I'm a hoarder. If you couldn't sell. Yeah. Um, I've got like four more of those shelves full and an entire closet over outside of frame. Just saying. Oh, and 98% of that's thrifted? Yeah. Anyway, let's just see what makes this the valuable version, shall we? It's on page 43. Let's just look off of the viewfinder. Here we go. Are you ready? That's right, Cthulhu! This is the Cthulhu Mythos Edition. Great condition. What this would run nowadays is close to $200. So it goes from a sub $50 book to, okay, around 50 bucks to almost $200 just because of this section and one other section. Because technically TSR didn't really have the rights to this. Uh, Cthulhu wasn't public domain at the time and was being published by one of their competitors, so they really didn't want to push that. So I just lucked out that the previous owner had this edition and didn't destroy it. I've actually spoken with other collectors who have found the same edition where somebody decided to write Ozzy rules on the inside cover, which he does. He does. They wrote Aussie rules in huge letters and actually started coloring in the pictures. And I weep. So that's my best of right there. Now, for just a little short aside, let me go grab something really quick. And by grab something really quick, I mean turn around and pick it up. Yep. There you are. Ow. Just smack my leg on the table. This entire batch that I'm about to show you cost me a whopping four bucks. Because the thrift store that I went to doesn't know how to price the things I love. And in future videos, I'll show you why that is very, very significant. First up, I found... Oh, okay, take that back. I'm not taking credit for this find. This was my girlfriend's find. She found this while going through the recipe books section. Because... Three ring binders all have recipes in them, right? Yeah. $1.99 for this. Sadly, it has a wee bit of condition on the front, but I'm not going to fault it for that because inside it not only has the entirety of volume two, 
it also has a bit of volume four, if not all of volume four, from Dragonlance. Two bucks in the recipes. Yeah. Slide that over there. We didn't see anything else throughout the entire book section where we check. Uh, we've actually gotten pretty good at finding RPG books, and we know where they hide them. Saw nothing. But on our way out of the store, I decided, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and check. Uh, at least one of the aisles where I found other neat non-RPG type things, which sadly I didn't find. But while walking back past the book section, I got a better angle at the magazines. Found some stuff. We've got Star Frontiers. Both the basic and expanded rules. These are first edition, first printing books. Decent enough condition. Not amazing on the expanded rules, but the basic rules. Quite nice. So I've got some more Star Frontiers to go with that box set. Yay! And, of course, adventure modules for Star Frontiers. Somebody's parrot in the background just decided to let the world know it exists. We'll see if this mic picks it up. I keep forgetting that this is a much better mic than one I, the one I've been using for Let's Plays. This one's cardioid. That one's omnidirectional. Terminology. You gotta love it. Got some Gamma World basic rules. Good bit of Dungeons & Dragons from the basic and advanced, or expert rules, I mean. To the player character record sheet. A.K.A. where you write down your stuff. And a couple of adventure modules. I paid 29 cents for all but two of these little books. Because I bought enough books to get two free. So that was one RPG haul. Yeah, we didn't find anything else that night because, like I said, we're in a lull. My best RPG haul had about 30 books in it. Priced anywhere between 50 cents to 2 bucks. It was a good night. In fact, that was the same night we got this. So that is just a small taste of some of the thrifting that I've done. I want to, like I said, I want to make this a weekly series, so... Oop, camera bumpage. I'm going to have a few best ofs because I'm not finding stuff every week like I used to. And so, I'm going to give you all a choice. Let me know down in the comments section, do you want the next best of episode? I'm going to put that little disclaimer in there just in case I actually break through the lull next week. Do you want the next best of episode to be about board games? All of those nifty little board games there. Okay, my favorites out of the nifty little board games there, 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 and two rooms that way. Or do you want me to go over tech? Because believe it or not, the tech I find is a little bit more insane than the sheer number of board games. I don't find as much, but oh my goodness. So I'm going to leave two clickbait style teasers there for you. Oh, and I apologize for no intro or outro. This is a new series and I didn't think the Minecraft Let's Play intro would be suitable for a video on thrifting. And I don't have an end slate ready, so this is going to be a cold intro, cold outro. Until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.